Hi, this is Brian from Auckland Security Cameras and welcome to the Mobotics uh, MX Management Centre 1.5 uh, Introductory Training. Uh, now, before we get into the training, uh, the first thing you've got to know is the uh, firmware of your cameras. Any cameras that you have loaded into your system must be uh, greater than 4.3.2.72. And if you don't know how to check that, just uh, browse to the camera admin menu and in the hardware and release information that's in there, you'll be able to see what firmware the camera's running. So once again, it must be greater than 4.3.2.72. All right, this, is, uh, this training is all about MX Management Center. Now there are other videos online out there, but uh, I've noticed that a lot of them cover things that really you're not, you don't need to know. Um, so this video covers the three things that you do need to know as an, as an end user. And that is number one, how to view live footage. Number two, how to search for and find recorded footage. And number three, how to give evidence to the police or the boss. So let's get started. Number one, uh, live view. So looking at what's happening right now. So as you can see at the moment, we've got the software configured as a grid because we've got multiple cameras. One of the features of the grid view is that you can drag any camera and drag it across into the large window in the middle, which is called the focus window. Uh, and then once you're there, of course, you can zoom using the plus slider down the bottom and move around within the image. Okay, one other nice feature is that if you've got a camera which is recording, you'll see a little icon over here that looks like a micro SD card. If you grab that and drag it to the left, you'll see the most recent images, uh, events rather, with the camera. Okay, So you can stop there, and if that particular one's of interest to you, you can go and look at that recording straight from the grid view, just by clicking on that icon there, and you'll notice now you're in the playback. But we're not dealing with playback just yet, so we'll just click on the view button and get us back to live. Now, I've just clicked on the home button, which hopefully your installer would have set up. Uh, and I've created, I've got this system set up. Uh, this is a grid view that I've called training. So it has one camera in the focus window and several cameras on the right. Now the most important button uh, on the software in terms of moving around is the view button, which you'll see I'm hovering over at the moment. Now the other concept that you must understand with the software is short click and long click because it's designed for touch screens. So if you do a long click on the view button, you'll see a menu in behind it. And that's consistent throughout the software. Anytime uh, there's a menu in behind, if you do a long click, you'll access that. If, on the other hand, you just come along and do a short tap, like I've just done there, it'll execute whatever that button was set to. So in this case, it was set to take us to the graphic view. And just while we're here, this is another feature of the software. You can upload pictures uh, or site diagrams. Back to the grid. Okay, and that's pretty much all you need to know about uh, moving around in live view. So now we'll get into the more interesting stuff, which is how to find and view recorded footage. Now I've already showed you one way to get to playback, but the simplest way really is to, again, do a long click on our view button and simply select playback. Now if I just click on the word playback, I'm going to get playback for the camera, which is in the main focus window, that makes sense. If you don't want to view that particular one of the carport there with the two cars in it, come along here and click on the arrow to the right of the word playback and you'll see all your other cameras. Now you probably won't have anything like that number of cameras, but uh, just be aware that if you want to click on uh, any one of those ones there, then it'll take you to the playback for that particular camera. Okay, so let's do that. Let's go ahead and we'll go to playback for the carport camera. Now. A couple of really nice features about the software. First and foremost, um, you can simply overtype the time and go straight to the time. So you can see it at the moment, the, that event there is on at 1300. If we were interested in something that happened at 11 o'clock that day, all I need to do is change that 13 to an 11 and hey presto, the software takes us straight there and we can view it. We simply press the play button and we can watch video. And as you heard there, we've got sound as well. Now the most important button to understand in terms of playback is this one here, which is to the right of the player controls. It's called the playback mode button. So I'm gonna spend a couple of minutes now showing you how to use that. The way to think about this is if you're looking for an event that you don't know exactly what time it occurred, 
The idea, what I would suggest, is start at the bottom and work your way up. So first of all, start down here in time lapse. So you might select one hour, for example, as I've just done now. And now when I click the back button, watch what happens. Okay, it just jumps back in one hour blocks and grabs the event that's the closest to the uh, to one hour ago. If there's no events, then it'll just keep on jumping back until it finds an event. So that's a really good way to find things when you've got absolutely no idea what time something actually happened. In some cases, not even uh, you don't even know what day it happened. So it can really quickly zero you in on that. Now, once you get close to where you think your incident was, the next step when you, to get a bit more fine-grained in your search is use the image playback. So in this case, what I use is often is event images. So just go ahead and select event images. Now, when a Mobotics camera senses movement, it creates an event. And for every event, it creates one image, and you can search on those. So the whole idea of time-lapse and image playback is to save you the effort of sitting down and watching videos, which is really boring and really inefficient when you're trying to find something. So time-lapse and image playback is what you use first if you've got no real idea when something happened. So let's have a look at how event images work. I've selected it there in the playback mode button. And now if we press the forward button, you'll notice, see, we're not still not watching video. What we're doing is we're jumping from event to event. So very useful. Okay, so that's pretty much it. The player controls are pretty much like any DVD player, forward, backwards. That's a little speed control, the circle in the middle. Um, one other nice feature about playback is you can flag clips. So if I just cl click on that flag, you'll see it's just acknowledged there. And now let's say, let's change the time to um, 1400, click on that. So we'll go to another event. And let's say this event was also of interest to us. We want to come back to it later. Again, just click on the flag. And now when we do a long click on the flag, you'll see that we've got a bunch of clips. There's a couple I did yesterday and there's uh, these two today. Um, so what we can do now is we can go in here and click on the pencil and simply rename these clips. So we can, uh, I normally use the uh, leave the date and the time and then just go in and call this one maybe clip three and call this one clip four. Okay, and then click on the pencil again and you'll see now we've got some clips saved there and we can come back to these later and have a look at them. All right, and now the final part, the third thing to remember. So the first thing was how to look at live video. We've covered that. Second thing was how to find uh, recorded video and the third thing is how to give evidence to somebody maybe the police or the boss um, really simple it's a three-step process really number one navigate use your search tools which we've just been over and find the beginning of the incident so let's say for argument's sake we've got to the start of the incident here and then come right over onto the left and you'll see a little gray flag just click on that and you'll notice that it goes green and so does the one at the other end of the timeline what that's done is just added 60 seconds to that time. And now the next step is simply go to the export button, which is that one there, and then click on PC. And what PC does is it asks you then where you want to save it. And in this case, we'll just save it to the desktop, but we'll just cancel out of that. What selecting PC does is it saves the file as an AVI file, which is easy to view by anybody. Pretty much anyone can view that. Okay, and so it's as simple as that. That just adds 60 seconds. If you really want to get carried away, you can right click on the little flag there and you can adjust the start and the end time. Uh, but um, 60 seconds is a, is a nice rule of thumb. I would say when you export footage, make sure that you export seconds rather than minutes and never export hours. These are big files, high resolution images. So you're, uh, and you'll find that most incidents only take seconds anyway. Uh, now, one other feature before we leave is uh, on, on, on the playback is you can always tell with a camera, a Mobotics camera, how far back your footage goes by using this little slider here. So you'll see there the most recent event was today at 13.02. And if we drag it all the way across to the left, the earliest event was Wednesday the 23rd at 12.34. So that's just a quick way, just a little tip. Um, quite often I get asked uh, how far back does the footage go. Uh, you can quickly tell in the software by going into playback and just using that little time slider. All right, that about covers it. Um, 
Uh, the, one other, well, I guess one nice feature of the software is the help, uh, context sensitive help. So if you click on the question mark, you'll see that you've got help here. And if we come over here on snapshot, for example, we'll just click on the blue bar there for snapshot. And here's some context sensitive help, uh, which explains that feature of the program. And then once you've finished with anything like this, where you can see those blue bars, you, you just simply click on any of the gray areas and that will get rid of that. Okay, and then if you ever get lost, go home, which is an important thing which should have been set up for you by your installer and if and it would have been if it was with Auckland security cameras. Okay, so that's, uh, that's a quick introduction to the excellent uh, Mobotics MX Management Center software. This is version 1.5 of the software, which is the latest as of September 17. And uh, we'll be bring up, bring out other videos uh, as the software improves and quite often uh, every release of the software has new features. So it's a good idea to keep an eye on it, keep checking in to see uh, whether we've got new videos up. Okay, this has been uh, Brian from Auckland Security Cameras. Thanks for watching.